Is that when you had your eyes on like, all right, I gotta get in? Well, um, my first um, internship uh, was actually with Southwest. So like internship turned to like a contractor position. It was like a, um, it was like a knock analyst though. It wasn't really, it was really a desktop support of a man none is. And I think that was paying like thirty thirty five dollars an hour. I want to actually talk <laughs> about the internship that we met each other at. That <laughs> I, he probably ain't learned nothing because I know I, I ain't learned. Didn't learn at the internship. So listen. Yeah. They spent all the money in the world to build a new sock just to lay us off. <laughs> they didn't give us any training on how to use their sim or like what like we that had was no terrible, bro. we had no use cases. I swear to God, the only thing we did and he can vouch for this was look for wanna cry. Once wanna cry pop, bro, I, I was like, I don't know if you want to at a hot level if you want to talk about my Cisco. Yeah, oh, I don't care. Yeah, they were. I had I was breaking with racist interns. <laughs> it was so like. It was so crazy. But oh, real quick, we want you to bless the audience. A general number of like your total comp. Uh, it's close to my Are you interested in starting your career in the cloud? Well, if that's you, then I got some for you. Level Up in Tech is a comprehensive 24-week program guaranteed to help you land a high-paying role in the cloud. Some of the skills that they teach you in Level Up in Tech are server config and troubleshooting, AWS, infrastructure as code, CI, CD, scripting containerization and more level up in tech has helped over 800 people start their career in the cloud so if you're interested in the program click the link in my bio click under tech resources and click on start your cloud career but my icebreaker for you is gonna be all right you gotta pick one yeah big glow a sexy red in the aspect of what uh have fun anything like either or like you say, have fun. What do you mean by have fun? Like you might want to go have like a good time or something. Like who seems like they're gonna be funner? Nah, so that's crazy though, because I was in Houston, um, like a month or so ago at a conference I was speaking at, and Glorilla was out there at the strip club. You ran into her? Yeah, I ran into the strip club. She was on the stage, doing. But I don't know. I feel like sexy red though, like fun wise. Oh man, that's a good question. <sighs> Probably Glorilla, because I feel like. Sexy Red, I feel like she had too much fun for me. Like, she just, like, I don't, it depends on what we're doing. You got to you gotta <laughs> kind of tell me, like, what is the event? Like, what, where are we at? What are we doing? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's good. You know, like, are we at a strip club? You know what? We're at the club. I we're feel at... like part of me want to say Big Sexy. Nah, I definitely think, like. Part of me want to, but I don't know if she know how to act. That that's okay. That's what I. But I ain't want to say that. Nah, because I I, I, I feel like Glorilla really, and she know. I feel like Sex Red is like I don't care. Like, but then that's also like that's where the fun gonna be at too. Like, turn us up. But that, that, I think that's really what I was trying to say. Like, I don't really know like if she gonna act right. <laughs> nah, I feel you for sure. Nah, that's a good question though. That's a good question. <laughs> like, like, <clears throat> let me go ahead and intro the pod real quick. Welcome back to the Textual Talk Podcast. <clears throat> Well, I'm your host, HD, and we got we got a banger for y'all today, man. We got the infamous Tayon Tech. Listen, this is a real <laughs> intro. I ain't seen this dude since 2019 in person, and we <laughs> no, stayed in the cow. same area. No, it's not. It is. Damn. I ain't seen you, like, think about it, since the pandemic. I ain't seen you, like, in a long time. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen you since you had your little girls. Yeah. Last time I seen you, we uh went to Gators. Oh, we went to Gators, yeah. yeah. Damn. So that's a long time that ago. It has been a minute. Yeah, yeah. um... But y'all know what to do, man. If y'all on the podcast, man, or YouTube, or you listening, hit the like button, subscribe, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. But I don't need to introduce my guests, but I'm going to introduce them. You may know him as Tavion Payton, Tayon Tech, Mr. I didn't had three or four luxury cars in like two years, Mr. I'm Rich, Mr. <laughs> High Rise, Mr. Cybersecurity, Mr. <clears throat> I was doing black tech Twitter before it was cool. <laughs> we got none other than Mr. You know, Tayon Tech in the building. And, you know, I'm just going to let him introduce himself and tell the audience about him. Yeah, so I'll introduce myself. Uh, so, Tay, Tayon Tech. Um, I've been in the security industry since I was about 19. I'm 27 now, so eight years. Um, kind of starting out from high school. I had no idea what cybersecurity, even the tech industry was. I thought I was going to be a politician until I started taking those classes and reading all the books and having to do all this research. And I was like, yeah, no, this, this isn't it. But, um, yeah, one of my junior college uh, professors, he introduced me to um, Ethica Hacking, and he told me you can actually get paid to do this stuff. And I was like, what? 
And uh, I fell in love ever since. <laughs> yeah, man. And I want you to briefly talk about, you know, I'm from Louisiana, but you from Mississippi. <laughs> Oh, hold on. We're not just going to say, like, oh, like, Mississippi just first in Louisiana. This is no, no, no. Nah. I'm just talking about <laughs> we from states that typically people is not really doing much. They either in jail oh, or they sure. working, like, some regular job. Or, yeah. You know, struggling to make ends meet. And, like, education there is, like, very mm-hmm. low. So more so, I was just talking about in a sense, like, for the fact you coming out of Mississippi, mm-hmm. doing what you do now is, like, do you ever think about that sometimes? Like, yeah, you no. came from Mississippi? No, so... Um, he ain't even from Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, like, the past... Because, you know, I'm building my house and things like that. And so, like, I've been homeless for, like, the last two and a half, three months. So I've been going back, like, to Mississippi and stuff. And, like, when I just be riding around, I'm like, damn, like, if I would have stayed here, this would have been me. Like, my like my thing was, if I would have stayed in Mississippi, like, the height of my career probably would have been, like, a geek squad manager or something like that. Because it's like... That's all I really knew. Like, I didn't know nothing. Like, we don't have no big corporations there. Like, you get to be a manager at Walmart, call center. There's, like, no really jobs out there to where you can be like, oh, I work in the tech industry. I wouldn't have been exposed to nothing like that. But then, like, me moving out here to Texas, like, it exposed me to everything. So, no, as when I go back home and I just be looking around and I just see everything, I'm like, dang, man. Like, my life could have turned out so much more different if I were to stay. Right. That's how I feel. And I feel <clears> like. I looked up in a sense only because right when I graduated, I had to go back home, and mm-hmm. I did get the help desk gig in mm-hmm. Bossier by the Air Force Base. But that's because, well, now it's GDIT. They had a contract out there. Yeah. But before then, there wasn't any jobs out there, and that was apparent to me having to move. Yeah. I couldn't find no job anywhere. They was I probably had one of the higher-paying jobs in the area, and that was only that 40 k Yeah, and that's the thing right there because I know when I actually was like, you know, I kind of want to pursue like a career in technology – like, I looked up, like, network engineering, security engineer for, like, the whole state of, like, Mississippi. I think it was, like, five jobs that came back, and it was, like, help desk. It was, like, in Vicksburg, because <clears throat> Vicksburg have, like, a nice little tech, I ain't going to say tech space, but it, something. <laughs> and so when I looked into, like, Dallas, Texas itself, thousands and thousands of jobs. And I'm like, I'd be a fool to stay in Mississippi when I, oh, this is here. So that's what made me laugh. Like, I looked it up, and I was like, yeah, now nah, I'm gone. Yeah, same here. It was like indeed for Shreveport, LA, <laughs> 10, 15 jobs, Dallas, 2,000, 3,000. Yeah. So definitely. So I'm a little older than you, and I ain't going to do you. <laughs> Since you're a little older than Marquise, I don't do you like <clears throat> I do Marquise. I How really do. Marquise? Marquise will be turning, I think, like 25 or Damn. 25 or 26. I thought Marquise was like 30. Nah, he young. Damn. You see me clown him by him being actual, like a Gen Z, none 90s baby? Yeah, I'm dead. Wait, he. Oh, he really not. Because you baby. born 96. Yeah, 96. So He's I, more like 99. I'll let y'all slide a little bit. Yeah, I, we barely make it, though. I had a I have a cousin that's around your age. He was kind of like a little brother for a little bit. He was at my house like every weekend. Mm-hmm. So I was like, he know a lot of the stuff I used to watch. So I was like, I let 96 <laughs> pass. But like 97, 98, nah. Yeah. nah I played but good. sometimes you got to let 96 pass. You kind of got to let 97 pass, too. Kind of. I don't know. I feel it like depends. If you four years old in the year 2000, I think you decent. I think you straight. Yeah, I get it. I, I guess it's, it depends on how you was raised at 97. But, like, 96 is really the cutoff. Right. It's really 95, but 96 just really kind of we grazed by. <laughs> did you do any, like, community college or anything like that in Mississippi? Or no. did you come out here to do no, community no. college? So when I left Mississippi, like, in my head, as soon as I graduated, I was gone. So I went to school in Alabama. I went to a school called University of Mobile. And uh, it was, like, a small little private school. Or whatever I went there for like a year, and then I moved out here to Texas um, to actually run track. But then I had um, a knee injury, and it was like, eh, school wanted me to walk on instead of giving me a scholarship. I'm like, I'm not paying this, <clears throat> so I ended up doing that. And then I went to um, Farmers Branch, DCCD. Anyway, some community college in Farmers Branch. I stayed there for like a semester, and I moved to Arlington, and I went to like Tarrant County. And um, that's I, I took like a computer science course, hated it, and then uh, for one of my electives, I chose like intro to cybersecurity or something like that. And man, I fell in love. Like, <laughs> like it was just like, yeah, bro, I was staying at four or five o'clock in the morning, like learning stuff, doing labs, and it was just I don't know, it was like love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't have to like force myself to learn. It was like, nah, I really want to learn this. And that's not to say, you know, anybody that want to get in this industry, you got to have a passion for it. Because I'm all about the type of person, like, hey, man, get your money. Like, 
get your money. You don't have to have a passion for it, but it helps a whole hell of a lot if you do have a passion for it. Like, you don't feel like you're wrecking anymore. It's just like, all right, cool. Like, this is fun to me, and I'm getting paid to do stuff that I enjoy doing anyways. But, yeah, you definitely don't need to have a passion for it, but it helps if you do. Yeah. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> you are you going on, what, year six or seven, eight? What year? Eight. eight. Well, and you want to count, because, you know, they don't like I to count, count internships. internships. Yeah, they don't, they don't count internships. I'm like, bro, I was doing the same shit, so. I count your internships. Yeah. I count what I was doing at the College of Business. Yeah. Like my little IT gig. So we count the internships like eight years. Yeah. If we count in outside of that like five. Yeah. So, but you know why I want to say I'm going to push back on I think you do got to like it? Because you, me, Day. Marquise or anybody else we know, the people that's actually going out to keep on learning and build other skills mm -hmm. and can fix problems mm -hmm. and have value, they excel because mm -hmm. they like what they do. Yeah, but you also got to think about this as well, too. Like, And I'm going to keep it in the premise of maybe focusing on more technical roles. Yeah. Because non-technical is a little bit different. Yeah, it's completely different. Yeah. Well, in, in a, well, I say the thing is in our roles – it depends on like what type of person you are in the role. Like, are yeah, you an individual too. contributor? Like, like you know what I mean? Like, are you a person that has to be told what to do and things like that? And most likely, like, if you're someone that don't really care about it, <clears throat> you're probably going to get told what to do. And I'm not going to say they frown upon it, but it's like you're an engineer. So it's like we hired you to solve problems. Right. And so I guess once you get more like into it with your job and you really start just looking at stuff, then I feel like you – eventually become to liking it. Like, you know what I mean? Because you don't stay in tech 10, 15 years and not somewhat like right. it. And so that's the whole thing is like some of these people <clears throat> are just starting. Yeah. And in, I do, I'm with you, get your money. But yeah. I let them know, hey, if you, if you just want to do whatever you're going to do, you might just want to try something else because your job may be phased out if you don't try to keep on learning. Exactly. Bingo. And, that, and, that's, and that's one thing I try to tell people too, like especially in this space, like, we see it every day where, like, people get, like, um, outsourced to, like, India, especially in cybersecurity. Like, tier one cycle level and stuff like that, they quick to source that out. And so that's why I try to tell people, like, I mean, analyst jobs are a great stepping stone. Yeah. But you definitely want to have those skill sets where you can, like, solve problems and engineer stuff and just being able to have, like, you know, be a solution-oriented type of person versus yeah. just, hey, so what should I do next? Because it's like, I yeah. hired you to tell me what to do. <laughs> exactly. And and that's one of some of the things I talk about in my LinkedIn course, strictly mm -hmm. about that, how to go in somewhere. And by the time you hit six months to a year, you already made a good impression. And yeah. you can do what you want or you can stay there. And you'll be surprised, though, like, because I know with me, when um, the first time, like, I get an environment, just because I've been in so many different environments, especially when I was consulting, like, I know what's like. We're definitely going to get on that. Yeah. <laughs> so you just really understand, like, okay, this don't look right. I've seen this, like. These logs don't look right. Do we have this covered? Like, it's like as you get more experience, your job gets so much more easier. Cause, like, I know I just feel like built out this data pipeline. This is very kind of new to me. Like, I'm, you know, it's like engineering, like some cloud stuff and data. It was basically, it was data engineering. Like, it wasn't even, it was kid engineering, but it was data engineering. And I learned so many different skill sets. And I'm just like, dang, like, now nah, if I was to go do this, like, it took me like three months to do this project. If I was to go back and do it now, it probably took me like three weeks. So, it just, but that's the fun of it. That's the yeah. grind. We're we gonna we're gonna get into that. I want to briefly ask you. So, you left the the college <clears throat> in Arlington, mm -hmm. and then so after that, is that when you went to North yeah. Texas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us about North Texas, because <laughs> I would tell the audience that ideally, him he didn't major in CIS or computer science. Mm -hmm. He did it an unconventional <clears throat> way. So I actually want him to touch on that. Yeah, nah, so man, I, I kind of finessed my degree all around. <laughs> like, I didn't take any math or science. Well, no, I did take science. I didn't take any math classes. So I didn't take any, like, pre cal calculus, trig, none. I didn't have to take any of that because I took, like, AP um, calculus in high school and got the credit. But uh, when I went to UNT, I have a degree that's called integrative studies. And with integrative studies, you basically choose, like, three colleges, like, you know, school of business, school of engineering, all that. You choose three of them, and you have to select classes from them. So I chose college of business which was business computer information systems. That was that um, computer of engineering, I think, or yeah, school of engineering, which was computer science and then learning technologies, which is actually like, like IS class information security or it's information technology and things like that. <clears throat> and um, I kind of like, I knew I wanted to do cybersecurity. So I looked at all the classes IT related. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, cybersecurity is just you securing the IT stuff. 
So database management, system admin, networking fundamentals. Um, I took a damn assembly class. I can't believe I did that. I took assembly. <laughs> Hold on, what's assembly? Uh, very low level program language. So That's- I I can't even tell you what they really use it for. They were teaching us <laughs> Visual Basic. What the fuck? Well, nah, yeah, yeah. It was no. on no job application, bro. Try assembly, bro. Try, try run it like. So you use assembly to create compilers. <laughs> so it's it's stuff like that, but um, Crazy. yeah. So I was just taking like you know certain classes like that, and so like the way how and then like some they have like certain prereqs is like. Oh, you need to take this class. I'm like, well, I would go to a community college, take it. Because, like, say, for instance, if I wanted to take, like, a um, a certain level of programming class, it's like, oh, well, you got to take physics as well as, like, um, Cal 2 and some other bullshit. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, you know, I'm having to take three classes before I can take this one. So I would just go take, like, the first programming class at a community college, roll it over, and it would be the prereq for the second level course. And so I would skip out like that. So I was, like, transferring back and forth, and it was like, I bet. So <clears throat> I was actually supposed to be there for like five semesters, uh, but I ended up being there for like three. So by just kind of going down, like, like even with my um, school counselors and stuff like that, I wouldn't even go into them because like when I, I, it was basically like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Do the offer this like this semester and stuff like that. that's the only time I was going to go to them. Your to sign off on what yeah, because like the way how they would have me, I probably been at UNT for like three years. Yeah, and that's what we should <clears throat> actually talk about that because. Advisors got a lot of stuff going on. They really not that concerned with your career Man, journey. They're not. Like for real. I know they was they was never telling me like the right classes. Just, it was up to me to look at my curriculum and say, okay, I yeah. want to take this, this, and this. I want this teacher. I want to get here. Like you got to do all that stuff. So find yeah. you some friends that's been to college before. If you need help, if not, you're going to strike out trying to go by mm-hmm. with your advisor, say, put you in the wrong classes and all that. Yep. That happened to my brother. Yep. He was at school. He was like, yeah, I was in the wrong class. I was like, you really pay attention to what the class was? Yeah, bro. In college, you really got to be invested. Like, you really got to look out for yourself. Like, in my opinion, though, I don't think it's really the advisor job to sit there and guide you. I think it's more like a really, like, I mean, inv- like, advice. Like, hey, like, I'm thinking about taking these classes this year. Do you, like, how do you feel about that? Or, you know, in the terms of me graduating earlier or on right. time or this, like that. I really feel like you should, like, take control of your own college degree and, like, the class you're going to take. And then it's like, hey, like, is this offered this semester? Is it off? Like, I feel like you have to take control of that versus relying on them. Because, bro, they got thousands of students right. they doing this for. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And a lot of them <clears throat> don't know. Because, I mean, even your freshman seminar is BS. It's yeah. not, you ain't really learning nothing. You're going there to get an easy A. Exactly. So, so I think that's I think that's really the big thing, though. Like, in college, and um, I was very mature by the time I got to UNT, too. Like, I had an, you know... Not going to class, fail a couple classes, and we party. Are. Yeah, so you know, I really kind of, <laughs> I had really kind of got there, and um, at that point, it was like I was like, all right, bro, like I had a plan when I came out here. I was like, I need to be graduated by this time. I need to be breaking by this time. And um, integrated studies really helped me. I, I like, in my personal opinion, I feel like if you you know exactly what it is you want to do, like I feel like go integrated studies because you can legit customize your schedule. But that's also a bad thing, too, because a lot of people do that just to skate by and they don't really learn anything meaningful. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh, I ain't learned nothing in college and I paid all this money. Integrative so. slash general studies. But yeah. I want to <clears throat> ask you before we, because I know you were interning. Were you interning before UNT or uh, when you, once you got there? No, before UNT. Okay. We're going to talk about that real quick. Yeah. But did y'all know while he was at UNT, he declined an offer to be part of the RDC team, man? <laughs> Mark and them came up to him and was like, hey, yo, hey, uh, we see you watch anime and stuff like that. You trying to be down with us? He told him no. <laughs> man, no, I did. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, that's funny, though, because actually, um, I hooped with him a couple of times. He's real, like, real, like, funny, bro. I know. Nah, he real, like, funny. <laughs> I was mad when, like, I found out my younger cousins, their apartment's, like, two doors down from them. I was like, mm. so why you ain't tell us? You like, you know your cousins act just like them. Yeah. It's like, put us on. It's too late, though, but shout out yeah. to them. <laughs> yeah, nah, I be laughing at them dudes. Um, I don't even know about the AMP dudes. I just know the Casanet and Duke yeah. Dennis That's AMP them, yeah. Yeah, I was just been laughing because they be, like, Beefing doing stuff. stupid stuff. Like, nah, that's funny, though. See, that's funny. I, I wish I could be paid to be childish like they do. Like, <laughs> I've been trying to do that for a long time. <laughs> but let's talk about, now, one of the things I tell people, like, I'm not one of the people that say anymore, you ain't got to go to school or go to school. It really what work for you. Yeah. I do tell people a lot of times, I think the benefit of school that it can help you with, 
it's like some people, if they don't go to school and they go straight into working, mm-hmm. I don't think they built some of the social skills that you kind of get from having to navigate with different deep people in college. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the things that college really like excels you with. But one of the other benefits that you get from going to college that people don't utilize, like I told my little brother, I was like, he got a, a email from his um his professor. They were mm-hmm. taking like 10 of them to GDIT to go tour the building. Mm-hmm. I was like, go. I was like, the moment you step foot on the college campus, you should be trying to get internships and everything. Yeah, I was like, a lot of people like me, I got bad advice. Hey, go to the career fair your junior year. Yeah, No. Right. As soon as possible. Right. You want to start applying as soon as possible. Yeah, so from the moment you took that class and community college that you really love that got you in cyber is that when you had your eyes on like all right i gotta get an internship. i got an intern next semester yeah yeah talk <laughs> yeah. about that first internship what, what was that like nah so um my first um internship uh was actually with southwest i remember so that. yeah so um i was working with them and it was kind of weird how i got that actually um i was working in geek squad when i met the recruiter and uh, I, he brought his computer in i fixed it he was like oh like, you know you look pretty young how old are you Looking in school, yeah. And uh, he asked for my, he like, Dad, I've got my resume. I'm like, yeah, I got one in the car, actually. And I gave it to him. And, um, yeah, I, I had an interview set up the next week. And <laughs> and the crazy thing about it, like, after that internship ended, um, I got reached out by a staffing agency, Tech Systems, to go back and go work, like, as a contractor. So, like, internship turned to, like, a contractor position. It was like a... Um, it was like a knock analyst, though. It wasn't really, it was really desktop supportive on being honest. That's really what it <laughs> you was. You always they, finesse that knock. Yeah, that knock. They, they said knock analyst, but it was desktop support. But uh, <clears throat> I was working like 24 hours. Like I was working like two 12 hour shifts, like Friday and Saturday, overnight, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I think that was paying like $30, $35 an hour. Hey, you so I, yeah, so I was only working 24 hours a week, two days a week. I was good. For my little, you know what I was getting for my little 20 hours in college? Hey. 725. <laughs> no, that's crazy. So, throughout my entire time in college, I never had a minimum wage job. Like, I was at least always making a, at least 25, like 25, 30 an hour. So, like, you know, in college, you know, typically everybody can have, like, the struggling stories. I mean, I had it my freshman year. My freshman year, I was definitely struggling because I wasn't working. I was running track. But, like, after that, man, I was making, like, really good money. And I wouldn't even have to break a lot either. <laughs> Big take, not the little one. <laughs> I mean, uh, I definitely say start interning as soon as possible. Get a resume out and intern, for sure. Right. And with y'all, it's, now it's so much access to jobs and man. stuff like that. Y'all have no excuse. LinkedIn. No excuse. And LinkedIn wasn't really popping like that it back was not. then. Like, you know, now they got the LinkedIn influencers and stuff like that. But, like, back then... It was cool. It was definitely helpful, but now it's just like shit. Like yeah, it's yeah. it's like that. Like I know he get reached out to probably like five times a day. Bro, I can pull up my phone right now. I bet somebody <laughs> probably reached out to me today. and was like, hey, we got a job. <laughs> like I, I actually had someone reach out to me like two weeks ago. Um, had a job like a total company like six hundred thousand. But I, I want to like, set that joint. <clears throat> I, I shared one that uh the other day on the post. It's like cloud security something, mm-hmm. but it was it was around that same ball. Yeah, I think this one was like for a blockchain security engineer okay. or some shit like that. But that's cool though. Like you you niching down on that. So yeah, I'm definitely starting but to niche down. I want to actually talk <laughs> about the internship that we met each other at. That, <laughs> that I, he bullshit. probably ain't learned nothing because I know I, I ain't learned. Didn't nothing. learn shit at that internship. So listen, well, this, I don't even know if they really exist anymore because they merged with Trillix. But oh, they did. Yeah. Well, no, oh. no, no. My fault. McAfee and FireEye merged together and made Trillix. <clears throat> That's what it was. McAfee, McAfee and who? FireEye. For real? Yeah, remember FireEye had like that breach or something that happened with them? They did. They did. Yeah, they got dang. like an office in um down there by the uh, Star in Frisco. Oh, dang. I know. Hey, listen. Fun fact. When I accepted the offer for the gig I got now, mm-hmm. I was actually eating McAllister's in the old parking lot of mm-hmm. McAfee. It's a ghost town. <laughs> oh man, it's like I don't town. even remember that. Oh, no, nah, yeah, I do. It was in Plain, Plano, 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 yeah, Plano, yeah, yeah. Preston, Plano, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Preston, and uh, Hedgecock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preston Road. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, you, that was what twenty seventeen, right? Late twenty seventeen, because I started yeah, in March of twenty seventeen. Yeah, it was twenty seventeen. Because the next year, the Cause next I started month, that summer. Yeah, the next month I got laid off, and then you was back in school. Yep. Yeah, I was still there though. I ended up leaving the internship because I got another internship with uh, Bella Scott and White. Yeah. So like I, I remember that. Yeah. It was just like, bro, I'm not learning. Like, I'm not learning nothing here. It's yeah. like, you know what's <laughs> funny though? Shout out to uh shout out to Big Willie, man. Uh, was, Willie probably was the only one that was doing stuff. Bro, Willie, Willie was, was doing more work genius. than me, and I was on salary getting paid. Oh, he was an intern. 
I forgot, bro. Willie, they probably the only reason why they was sitting around was because of Willie. Willie it was, was you, Willie, and it was uh somebody else that was came in with y'all at the same time. I don't remember. I and mean, it was somebody else, but I remember. Because I remember we had like our manager was like a sales guy. Yeah. Are you talking about Alex? Yeah. I thought it was Josh. Yeah, Josh. Okay, I'm trying to see. So Alex was the manager at first. The mm-hmm. guy he was like big, tall, with a ball, wore a hat. Yeah. He was the manager first. Then Josh came in. Yeah. He was like security sales. Like, yeah. man, that was a, listen, we could actually have a whole pod. Yeah, about that's how a whole that was, a, podcast how that was a that. shit show. Like, yeah. like the Sam was a hot mess. Trash, garbage. But, you know, companies still be using that. They'll reach out sometimes. You know, oh, yeah, about ESM? Yeah. Be it. They, like, people still be using Nitro. When, before I started working at Optif, Ados was uh, pretty much offered me because I knew how to use Nitro and something else because they were using our McAfee products. Yeah. Right. Not uh, Sim was trash. The nope. The person who was the manager, neither one of them, never ran in the sock. Never worked in the sock before. Yeah. They spent all the money in the world to build a new sock just to lay us off. <laughs> they didn't give us any training on how to use their sim, or like what like we that had was no terrible, bro. we had no use cases. I swear to God, the only thing we did, and he can vouch for this, was look for one cry. Once one cry popped, bro. I was, I was like, bro. I was looking <laughs> for his IPs. With the um, one across, like yeah, with the signatures, and then send them to the networking team. That's all we did, bro. That was, and then that was, it was at one point. weren't they trying to make it like a physical? Wait, <clears throat> wait, yeah, no, they bought the physical people in there. Yeah, then they <clears throat> came in and saw some. First of all, oh, then they bought Mr. Bill in from the FBI, who <clears throat> didn't know what he was talking about at all. Yeah, I remember that. Talking about, oh, we need to learn Python. I say, bro, you don't even know what you're doing. They like, just what are you using you. Python for? Right. That's right. why. Um, that's what, well, he moved away, but I wanted to get Ron on the podcast because Ron was who I wanted to be the manager. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Ron knew his stuff. Yeah. Ron was like, uh, you know, Ron and all them was contractors. Him and the two other white guys. Can I think their name was? Uh, I can tell Daniel you. and someone else. I think that's their name. I can't remember. Because I know one of them went to, uh, he went to another, because uh, I forgot the name of it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're going to say, but all them was contractors. And there's a period of time when, you know, they want them to come over full time. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Ron was, you know, doing his negotiations and stuff like that. He yeah. walked into work one day and Bill told him, you're welcome. <laughs> and Ron came in there. Ron was like, I almost lost my job. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, like, no, that that work country was definitely toxic. And uh, it was, I yeah, I couldn't work there. Yeah, was, uh, I used to uh, <clears throat> I used to go to the Stonebriar and stuff on the weekends when I had to work on the weekend. Mm-hmm. But I used to, Go to Stonebriar and, and walk around. So when like, <laughs> like bro, it was nothing. Like we was like we would just be in a room, just like sitting there. Like I didn't learn nothing, bro. You, I learned everything what not to do. Nah, for sure. Only I reason I did. knew, only reason I learned some stuff was from Run. Run was like, all right, look, this is what you need to do. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Cause hey, text didn't know nothing. I used to say text. Do you know what to do? He would say no, but he wouldn't speak up. I was like, I don't know why I know what they do. <laughs> bro, I would just come in. I was like. As an intern, I'm like, hey, so what do I do? <laughs> like, it was legit. And I just go, I'll work with Willie. I'm like, hey, like, you know, what you, I want to hear, you know, I was learning from fucking Willie. I was learning from that intern. Right. <laughs> Aniba wouldn't show us nothing. Like, we learned a little bit. Like, see, now Kelly, that dude, he did the forensic <laughs> investigation. So they, he they actually, had a forensic lab. So yeah. he actually had stuff he was working on. So we tried to figure out what he was doing. His real name was James Brown. That's the funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> White dude named James Brown. <laughs> oh, man. But now that's funny. But then you went on to have. Two internships after that, right? Yeah. I went to Baylor Scott and White. So you did Baylor Scott and White during the school year, and then you did yeah. Cisco after that. And then it's Cisco after that, and then I got my full time job. I don't know if you want to, at a high level, if you want to talk about my Cisco? Yeah. Oh, I don't care. Yeah. They were, I, had, I was breaking with racist interns. <laughs> it was so, like, it was so crazy. So, um, this is a girl named Michelle. She's a, she asked her, she's a prophecy engineer at um, Amazon now. She We worked at Robin Hood with each other. Now she was at Google before that, but um, like her her parents, her people, like all of them have like high degrees, like doctorates and stuff like that. And um, we were just kind of going around. I didn't know, like, what are your parents doing? And in my head, I'm like, why, why are we even asking this stuff? Like, by what our parents? They'll ask me like, how you get this internship? I'm like, the same way you got this internship, or maybe not. Maybe y'all had a connection. I did, but I was kind of going around like asking like what our parents did and stuff like that. And um, uh, it got to her. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, uh, my family, like, they got their doctor. I forgot. I think her mom's Lord. I don't know what is it, but they got their doctor's degree. And I was like, what? And I was like, yeah, that was like, wait, wait, wait like, did she actually got a doctor's degree? I was like, yeah, she got a doctor's degree. And I was like, oh, wow, like, I didn't really think people, like, I was like, what? <laughs> Yo, 
Yo, dog. And it was like, I don't remember exactly. They said some other racist, like, bro, it was like, what the? F-? So we ended up going, well, she went to HR and told, and, um, yeah, it's like, um, I got listed as, like, you know, witnessing to it and stuff like that. But yeah, um, from what I seen, nothing happened. To I bet him. it didn't, cause yeah. The other thing is what I found out about Cisco throughout the years, like they don't pay what they supposed to. No, they don't at all. They do it as if like you supposed to be happy you working for Cisco. Yeah, and so that was the thing. So um, I didn't get a return offer from that internship or whatever, cause I I stopped coming like to the internship. Like we was in Richardson, we didn't have like nobody in the office. It was literally just like a bunch of interns in the room. So I would just stay home and work from home like because we we typically get um partner up with somebody and like i was um installing like uh cisco uh ice and um like the firewalls and stuff like that so I, like i was actually going out to clients i ended up going like the best buy or whatever in um minnesota i think or some shit to kind of help them install that that was minnesota yeah so i was um, saying how was it uh, it's, mm, i wouldn't go back you would no i mean it's, that's cold. I don't like the cold. Oh, you went doing the cold. No, I was doing the summer. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, yeah. I like. I just Milwaukee said because cause Target out there, so that's why I said it. Yeah, so I had a job off from Target, too. Target actually played pretty nice, but hey, they wanted me to move. I they do, move. but they was remote at the time when I was talking to nah, them. Nah, they wanted me but to they move. They put the roles on hold. Nah, they nah, wanted yeah, me to move. Yeah, I couldn't move to Minnesota. <clears throat> no, not at all. But, um, yeah, so, like, and I wasn't learning nothing. Um, I did get my CCNA and all that while I was there. So I did get that. Um and I got my CCNA cyber ops or some sh- like the, the I know yeah. what you're talking about. It's like a, the guy that used to work with me at income yeah. at the knock. He was talking about the cyber ops thing. Yeah, it, it was trash. But um, <laughs> I, it's Cisco. I, I would never work with Cisco. Well, you know what? Let me not say never, just in case they may up to pay. But no, like um, like a year after that, they ended up offering me a job, and I was just like, Nah, I'm good. Like, it, the money wasn't even worth it. It was like, I think the offer was like 105. It wasn't even more than I was getting paid. Like. Yeah. And they don't want to give you, like, no sign-on bonus. I mean, they give you one, but it ain't, like, 10, 15, maybe, maybe, yeah. 15, maybe 15, but, like, $10,000. It wasn't nothing crazy. But, and it's, I, and then Cisco's not just, like, a huge name for me. Like, it's not like I'm a network engineer. They don't engineer. have the same buzz they used to have. Yeah, nah. It's like, like I, yeah. It's like Cisco, Palo Alto is what Cisco think they are. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. I like definitely agree Palo with that. Is, is, is what they is. It should even checkpoint <laughs> better than Cisco down to me. Yeah. Like pay wise. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of, like, even like the fame companies now, like the fame, the fame companies are, they're still the fame companies, but like as far as pay, they're not paying with like the late stage startups and all that. Like everybody want to go to the fame companies now, but it's like, now nah, you need to start going to like the squares and yeah, the, the uh, open eyes and stripes and stuff like that. Those are becoming the new standard of fame when it comes to But you to know pay. what happened though? And you know this because we're going to talk about this probably in a, in a second. Mm-hmm. In 2020, the influx of everybody being remote and stuff. Oh, yeah. All the fame companies just kept on hiring people so they could take the talent. And a lot of them weren't yeah. doing nothing. So it oversaturated the market. That's why a lot of these people got laid off. A lot of people was not doing work. Yeah. If we want to be honest, I got documents and articles that prove that a lot of people was not doing work. <laughs> yeah. And they was getting paid a lot. Yeah. And that That's brings exactly no value is. to the company. So all them sob stories that some people on there be lying about, they just looked, a lot of people just looked up. They didn't, I can't say they didn't deserve them, but I'm going to say it. They ain't deserve the roles. Yeah. It definitely was. Because <laughs> I know, man, because like during a pandemic, bro, and then that was letting you like leave California and stuff. And they were still, well, some company was still paying you like on the New York and the like, yeah. the San Francisco, like, bro, like, man. Money was good. <laughs> Money yeah. was good. Like they were like, oh, you got to okay. Here, cool. Here's the offer. Like it was so it was so easy to get a job during that time. Like if you was like even just somewhat good at it, it was like you could have got a nice job. Yeah. But and let's talk about briefly. Okay, so you got your first full time offer, <clears throat> or you start your first full time job at Optif, mm-hmm. where we were working together, mm-hmm. and you still were in school. And then at the time, I was actually finishing up grad school, mm-hmm. and now I remember you had. I'm trying to see if I had already said I was working there. You called me up. It was like, yo, hey, what yeah. you think about uh, Optiva? I was like, I like it so far. Uh, yeah, because nah, that's the thing. I, I um, interviewed like six different teams because like they hit me up like um, a year ago, like a year before they hit me back up and they were trying to get me to come work over there. And I was like, oh, like I'm going to somebody like my last year. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like, you know, whenever I'm finished with the internship, like, can y'all contact me around this time? In my head, I'm like, they're not going to hit me back up. Bro, August came. I kids, you know, August came. They hit me up. I was like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, we still, are you um still interested in Optif? I was like, yeah, what's up? 
So I interviewed, bro. I think I had like maybe ten interviews because it was like I was I interviewed with like all the teams, and uh, I think it was like the pen test team um, with like a consultant role, a cloud consultant. <clears throat> um, it was like forensics, and it was like something else. And like so, I was pinning them all against each other to negotiate my salary. And um, the crazy thing about it, I, I really wanted to go like do the pen test, mm -hmm. but they wasn't paying that much money. Yeah. And so, and I was trying to get them like you know leverage. That. It was like the digital forensic team. They was um that was actually paying a decent amount of money, but they wanted me to move to Denver, I think, or yeah, something that's like a, that. The headquarters was in Denver. yeah. They wanted me to move to Denver, and I was like, I ain't moving to Denver. And so, um, the next one was the one you know with Ashley and all of them. And so, um, I was like, hey, can you match this offer? And she matched it. I was like. That cool, yeah. And I started it. <laughs> that's because the the Future Center they had that bread with the contract yeah. was on. That's probably one of their biggest money. Yeah, makers. Disney. They stick yeah. up that contract now. Yeah, that's crazy. That's because I was just on a cruise and I saw like the Disney wish. I was like, damn, that's crazy. I used to actually uh monitor this ship yeah. and all the systems and stuff. That was dope. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? What I thought about was when I was in Burbank. Uh, I was so mad. I wanted to go to Burbank, bro. <laughs> but I'm laughing when I went to Burbank because that's the time you and Richard got into it in the WhatsApp. <laughs> What happened? Man, Richard said something to you about, like, in in so many terms, where you at, boy? Like, that type of tone. And he was like, man, I ain't got to tell you shit or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Yo, nah. I, okay, so that's one thing about me going into the corporate world, bro. I was always, like, on one. Like, it was like, bro, I don't know. But that, no, but Richard started, though. He didn't. Yeah. He just was picking. Yeah. Because yeah. When, I, when I tell you, <sighs> so... <laughs> You was this was you was long gone. Yeah. Like I said, we eventually did. The people who you would always think would mess up ended up messing up in the long run. Yeah. Surprisingly, he wasn't a person I ever thought would mess up, but he don't do good well under pressure. Mm -hmm. He was one of the people, man. Like sometimes he couldn't even respond. Like if he messed up on something, he'd be scared. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, if you don't just tell this person this. <laughs> um so I think really, I didn't like like when he would like do yeah. that, but Yeah, nah, man. It, yeah. That's one thing about me. I had to learn how to like go off on people professional though. <laughs> I think you was, matter of fact, you left right before we went to the Frisco office. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I left like two, because actually I think they was in the process of moving when I left, because I remember I went in the office. I actually go right back for Ashley, though. Ashley was like one of the best managers. Like, she was definitely top three managers. <laughs> top two. That's facts. Hey, shout out to Ashley. Yeah. She is at CrowdStrike now. So oh, she is? She a director oh. at CrowdStrike. Mm. Talking yeah. complete. <laughs> but we still on LinkedIn with each other. But now, mm. um... Ashley was like dope. Um, and like when I had came in, I told her, I was like, you know, I'm leaving. She's like, I'm actually surprised, like, you didn't leave earlier. She like the work just didn't seem like um it was um interesting. I was like, no, nah, it was cool. It's like I was doing this in my internships. Mm -hmm. So it was like, cause I wanted to go like as a Splunk engineer. Like I was trying, I forgot his name. John? John, yeah, I think the black guy. Uh Splunk engineer? Yeah. That was doing Splunk with us? Nah, he wasn't Splunk. No, it was John. Yeah, John, it was John. Like John I, Landers. like I, yeah, 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 yeah. The goat. Yeah, and I, you know, I would like I would kind of shadow him and talk with him and stuff like that because like I really wanted to go on the engineer side of things, but um, obviously somebody had to leave or something happened because we didn't really have like open slot, yeah. and I wasn't trying to wait to get promoted or anything like that, and um, yeah, but yeah, I ended up leaving after like being there for eight months. Yeah, and uh, that's when I went to consulting with Booz Allen Hamilton. Best experience I ever had in my yeah, life. It, kid, kid yeah. you not. <laughs> the crazy thing is, the funny thing is, like, <clears throat> right before the pandemic started, I actually was trying to move over to the consulting side of Optus. Uh -huh. Cause John, I had so. I got a friend right now that he's on. He's like on the uh, pen testing side. Really? Yeah. Uh, Splunk Conf and whichever one it was, the uh, 2019, the first yeah. one I went to. John and everybody was there, so John had plugged me <clears throat> in with the consulting people and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so I was going to try to move over there, but then you know, 2020 happened, yeah. so I was like, oh, that was. That was dead. Yeah, like, uh, traveling and stuff. But yeah, man, I, I want to touch on Ashley real quick because mm -hmm. like I said, like Ashley probably like top two and it's not two for me. Yeah, and nah, she definitely one of the best managers I, I knew had. I knew Ashley was going to be good because the night, I used to work night shift, so Ashley was there yeah. at night. I used to work the night sometimes too. Did you? Or did like, it, it switched. Or, or when you switched. Yeah, it okay. switched, yeah. I see, I started, when we first started the contract, June 1st, mm -hmm. I was doing nights and it was worked out for me because all my classes were like at night in grad school. Mm-hmm. Ashley was listening to that Drake Scorpion when I came in. Uh, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, all right. Bet. Yeah. Right, She's going to be solid. Nah, Ashley, so. Never mind. But yeah, Ashley, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, he left us guys for, for Greener Pastures and went to Booz Allen. But, you know, 
I think I remember you talking about like one of my questions. I ain't even looked at my questions in a while, but one of my questions was, did they hold your hand when you was a consultant? Or they was like, hell no, go figure it out. Man, I still remember, bro. I ain't getting no. They, bro, it was kind of good, but it was like, bro, they threw me in there with the woods, bro. So when I came in there, I was supposed to be doing instant response or whatever. And so when I went in there, bro, they got me doing Splunk architecting and engineering. I'm like, bro, when it comes to Splunk, I barely can search in Splunk. And y'all got me trying to architect this stuff. Bro, I took training. Like, I was being in the hotels, just, like, reading up on all this, doing this, bro. I think I probably learned everything as, like, a Splunk admin in a week of just, like, the fundamentals of Splunk. Like, just learning it, learning how to, like, search through the administration, all of that. And, um... Yeah, bro, it was, I was getting thrown, I got thrown in fire, bro, but <clears throat> it, it helped me, though, like, I feel like in consulting, though, you definitely got to be, like, a go-getter, you can't be someone that's waiting on somebody to tell you what to do, because cause it's it's so political, too, like, I don't, I think now I would navigate probably fine in there, because I got a little bit more experience, but you got to think about, it. like, I only had realistically, like, eight months of experience, like, in corporate, like, you know, real corporate America, um, before going to consulting, and it's so political, bro. Like, it's all about who you know. Um, I had a good career manager, too, so um, that was pretty good. He was, you know, he guided me and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, bro, it's political. Yeah. I it's, think it's super political. That reminds me, like, uh, Goldman Sachs, like, the best advice I got was from Frank, and he was like, be visible. Yeah, that's, bro, that is it. Be visible, communicating, talking to people. Like, that's that's literally what it is. You want to make sure. Because the thing about it is, like, when it comes to, like, layoffs and stuff like that or getting the best contract. Because the thing is, what people don't know about consulting, um, you have what's called a bench. And the bench is basically, like, you're not you're not billable right now. And so, like, with Booz Allen, I think if you're on a bench for more than, like, two weeks, I think, or a month. Because the thing is, they give you, like, four, like um, 40 hours for training. So, like, whenever you're on the bench, you don't want to be on the bench. You want to be like, all right, I'm going to use this for training. or But, like, when you're just on the bench, you're not doing anything. It's like you're not we're not making any money off you. So, if you're on here for too long, you you don't get fired. But I forgot exactly what they call it. It's it like, a, like a pip or LOW something? or something like that, lack of work. They hit you with, like, but it's basically, like, you finna get fired. And um, so, the way you would, like, kind of stay from being off the bench, like, whenever you're not on the contract or on the gig, you'll probably find, like, internal work. Like, that may be, like, work that needs to be done internally for Booz Allen, and you will kind of work in there and stuff like that. But I stayed on the contract for SAP for, like, a year. Like, I like they would they kept requesting me to come back. So I, I built that Cyber Fusion Center. <clears throat> um, I built out uh, their incident response, uh, yeah, incident response program. Um, I built out their fundamental management program. Um, I helped re-architect their Splunk instance. Uh, bro, I I did some of my best work at SAP, and then I went to like Verizon Media, which was like Yahoo or something. And yeah, um, I, yeah, split. yeah, yeah. Yahoo fired man. I want <coughs> for Yahoo. Yeah, now nah, they actually reached out to me a couple of times. I yeah. heard I heard they secured they the team some, pretty dope. The paranoia is fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's called paranoia. So they reached out to me a couple of times. I was like, man, I'm not gonna one of their directors me. was actually at Opto right before, right when I was coming in. Uh huh. Oh, man, that's dope. And he got a podcast and everything like. I don't know. We ain't got time to talk about it. We talk about that later. Yeah. Right? But what I want to tell everybody is, <clears throat> so all them things he named are achievements. And when I'm doing y'all resumes, I always say, what are things you achieved at your job? Mm -hmm. He don't have to, and based on what job he applying to, he can decide what achievements he want to put down. Yeah. And that's how you get a call back. Yep. Nobody want to say, job descriptions. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I came in to work oh, every day. I looked in the sim. I did it. Okay. But and what did you, you do? Did that. <laughs> Like, what What did you triage? Like, what did you, like, how did you help reduce the tickets? Like, how did you right. help? Like, yeah. Like, I don't even care if all you did, you went through and you fixed all the documentation and you fixed the use cases. Do you know how many places got some trash use cases and trash documentation? Documents. And I think that's what people really don't, like, when it comes to documentation, like, in security, documentation is, like, bro, like, I just, because um, I was saying, like, the data, like, data pipeline, bro, I just wrote so much documentation, like, I. Right, how do we change the configuration? How does it operate? What does the architecture look like? You know, we want to make a config change. Like, what, you know, what about errors that may come across? How you troubleshoot that? How you, like, documentation is very, very, very important. And in the security, especially as an engineer role, documentation is probably 20% of what you're doing if you're actually yeah. engineering stuff. Facts. 
Thanks. Not only that, like um, I talked to one of my guys. He actually still an optimist. He was like, "Bro, like your name's still on like a lot of company <laughs> stuff." I was like, "I bet." Yeah. Like I should like if I ever want to come back, should have the interview. Like just go look at my work. Nah, for real. But also, what you just said about documentation reminds me about what we know about pen testing. Mm -hmm. Everybody think, uh, Mr. Robot shoot my bang bang. Nah, nah. Not realizing like the real part they care about is that report. Yeah. That big write up that people don't like to do. Yeah. That you got to get them because they pay you a lot of money for that. And I wrote a, a pen test. Oh, I forgot. I interviewed. I mean, I interned at selling these too. I forgot about that. So I like putting. And um, I actually did a pen test um, with them. They had so their security team was like the pen test team, the security engineer. Like it was like all in one thing. And so um, I actually went on a couple of pen tests with them. And like the report was like crazy long. I think I still remember. I, I had write like a 50 page report. <laughs> So, yeah. The crazy thing is, I actually want to do a physical pen test. Mm. I don't know. Like, I might want to mind doing one for sure. But like, I, I definitely think I want to kind of go towards, like, a red team. Like, a man, I like I want to do one of the ones, like, social engineering where I'm acting like I work there. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that's like, dope. Yeah. I make a fake, like, Verizon badge and yeah. say, oh, yeah, or I got to come install this. Like, I want to yeah. do something like that. I wouldn't mind doing it, too. You got to go to, like, a smaller consult security consultant, uh company kind of getting into stuff like that though it's so many like when you just sit down and watch people it's like so many things you see your flaws you can exploit yeah when people all day people's like, the weakest link i know i can go through here and, and do this damage like, like people head. get on the internet and tweet out their passwords all the time and don't even realize it mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely they yeah. do but i was gonna ask you about i thought we were supposed to be taking a shot we are i'm gonna get on <laughs> i'm gonna get on that in a second i'm gonna let you actually talk about so <clears throat> Well, remember in the beginning, guys, I told you, like, he was one of the first people to be doing Twitter. He was. I remember back at Optiv, you was on Twitter. Yeah. Talking about, like, all this tech stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he was already there. So I could never say, like, you got on the wave like everybody else did. Like, you had been yeah. there. Like, I had a Twitter since 2011, but I was on there talking about BS. Or yeah. At the time, he was talking <laughs> about tech. I was talking about boxing. And Bunko boxing. Yo, was it buckle? Yeah. yeah. Hey, listen, everybody. Now, shout out to Mikey Rocks. That's what I got there from. My little girl, I got her singing his uh, one of his songs called Perfect. Because my one of my intros used to be uh, this song Perfect. Uh -huh. But he used to be talking about that all the time. So that's how, like, kind of, I won't say your claim to fame, but people was like, oh, that's, that's Tay on Tay. that's like, kind of what it was. He used yeah. to have his own whips. Like, all the stuff that, like, that I do now for business-wise or how I'm helping clients about, he was doing it already. So I'm letting y'all know that now. Like, that's, like, no cap. But what made you want to already just try to brand yourself? Um, I don't know, bro. So to be quite honest with you, um, like I had no aspirations to like want to do that. I was just sharing my journey, to be honest with you. And like over time, it was just like, dang, like, you know, like, let me, it, it just kind of like happened. Like, as I was like, okay, like people's always hit me up asking for advice. So, all right, let me do consultations. So I started doing consultations, stuff like that. But then after a while, I just kind of, like, once I felt like my brand was kind of big enough, like, I rebranded to where now it's, like, I still talk about, like, career advice and stuff like that. But, like, career advice is so repetitive. It gets repetitive at times. It's, like, I'm getting tired of telling y'all to do the same exact thing. And so um, I still do that, but I also kind of, like, prefer now, like, tech reviews. Because, like, I, I've always been into, like, technology. Like, I always, like, you know, taking stuff apart, like, reviewing phones. Like, that's really, like, my passion, like, doing stuff like that. And so I was just like, you know, Tay on Tech. That's actually how I got the name. Like, Tay on Tech was, like, more so, like, the technical reviews. Like, you know, Tay is reviewing the tech. So that's really how the Tay on Tech name came about. And, um, yeah, it was actually nothing to do with cybersecurity or nothing like that. It was supposed to be tech reviews only. But it was so hard to make that transition because everybody knew me from, like, career advice and finance and all that stuff like that. And so I was like, all right, I'm, I'm tired of trying to do it. And then, like, my brand kind of got big enough. I'm like, you know what? Y'all Either y'all going to rock with me or y'all not going to rock with me. So they started rocking with the tech reviews and stuff like that, you know, whenever I do do them. But um, still, the career advice stuff still outshines. And it's just, like, it's so hard for me to just, like, completely leave the career advice alone because, like, it still helped fuels my other stuff. Yeah. Because so, you know what's funny? That one of the chicks reached out on your thing. Was like, do you do consults? And I didn't want to go on your thread and say, Nah, you could have. No, I didn't. Yeah. I oh. hit her up. Like, we follow each other. So I was like, I saw you on this post. Like, I do consults. You can hit mm -hmm. the link. She didn't say nothing. But I was just like, because one of your, I did that on one of your friends' 
uh, Instagrams one time. Mm -hmm. Not really trying to do it. I just did it like, hey, like, mm -hmm. uh, oh, he asked me, like, you know how we got tired of saying generic questions? So he yeah, asked yeah. me something. I was like, oh, well, um, shoot, bro, you know, you could ask me. I just hit the link in my bio. And then mm -hmm. I'll tell you who it is off, off camera. But it's like, hey, don't sell your stuff on my post. I was like, man, my bad. I really wasn't trying to. I was just like. I think I know I'm, you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm tired of telling people the same thing. Yeah. Like, so like, just just click the link in my bio. It's like, you know. It, yeah. It was, I didn't really. I didn't take offense to it. It wasn't nothing to me. Yeah. No. But what you was talking about with the tech reviews is what you would have been in on. But you was too, you know, you was living your best life when we had the tech meetup uh, yeah. like two weeks ago. But wait, what tech? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was yeah. I think I was in Bahamas or something like that. See, yeah, that's life. <laughs> but that was one of the things we talking about. So it was me, Damian, and Lise, and we was talking about back in the days, like all the Android phones. And I was saying how in 2010 I used to watch like Phone Dog and all mm -hmm. these other channels. I was like, I used to want to review phones. Yeah, because you was definitely Android. You was Android. Yeah, I used to have like all the phones, like all like the stuff. The that Pixel. M, what was it? M M B K M B K M K B S G. Yeah. Yeah, like all that stuff, like I was on that like back then, but Me I didn't too. know like this tech tips, to all them. But that's why I was telling you even before this, like people did enjoy like the couple of episodes Eric and I did where we took like articles mm -hmm. or real stuff we seen on Twitter and we just talk talking about it. But I do mine in a sense, like I'm a I'm a Joe Bot a Joe Button podcast mm -hmm. fan. So I was like, Yeah, I like I, I like Joe Button. Right. Podcast. I was like, I'm gonna be the pod, like this also like the side, like, you know, Joe do his interviews, yeah. but people come weekly. He's like, man, let's see. Did you hear about that breach or it's yeah. all this, this, this tech that came out? So merging that is, like, pretty cool. I wanted to do that, bro, but I don't, I don't like, I don't think I just got, like, the work ethic because I got so much other stuff I'm doing I right you. now. I, man. Listen, I, I congratulate you, same bro. Time, man, they were like, Your work ethic crazy. It's like, how do you, they was like, how do you pot? Two how do you kids, have your clients? And I was job. like, I just, I just get it in, bro. Uh, you, I'm not, and you even, even with your boxing channel, bro, you was always consistent. Like, that's one thing I can say, bro, bro. You consistent as hell when it comes to that. Like that, I, because stuff. Sure. <laughs> this actually helped me be more consistent because I love boxing, but for one, it's a niche sport, <clears throat> and I had to keep on upping the ante to even really talk about stuff people ain't care about. Yeah. Versus. In 2020, like, it's like, you know what? I'm going to pivot and talk about stuff I've been talking about. Like, I've been helping people. Yeah. And I got content for days. I can talk about being laid off. I can talk about job offers. I can talk about yeah. this and that. I can talk about managers yelling at me. I can talk about, like, a whole bunch of stuff and mm -hmm. people want to hear because. It's relevant. When, right. When you was coming up, I was coming up, whoever was coming up before yeah, us. Yeah, because I know I was, I used to always talk with you and Pat about certain stuff. I mean, y'all was a little bit older than me. And I'm like, oh, like, you know asking questions and doing all this and stuff like that. So I definitely, it was definitely like dope that I had y'all to kind of like lean on, ask certain questions Speaking when it came of, to that. we might need that episode. Me, With you, Pat. and Pat for McAfee. Yeah. That'd be funny. That was like, Optive. Optive and McAfee. He was at McAfee. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. Because I remember you telling me like, yeah, you know, Pat, Ophie. yeah, damn, that's crazy. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Damn. But, um. Where Pat at now? He's at. Uh, what they say on uh confidential. Oh, okay. All right, <laughs> all right, all right. All right. <laughs> um, let me get this real quick for you. Uh, I want to switch past because I know you <clears throat> actually did something after booze, but I want to <clears throat> jump right into you getting into doing more. First of all, moving to the finance space and then doing insider <clears throat> threat. And I kind of want you to tell the the listeners and the audience what's insider threat about because we see it all Out the time. time. Yeah, no, so inside of threat, a lot of different companies paint inside of threat different, but at the end of the day, it's because the thing about because inside of threat is basically threat detection at the end of the day, but it's more so like instead of protecting like the company from like outsiders, you're protecting the company from like the insiders because you got to think about it. Your employees are probably they have access to all of this important data every day. And they may or may not purposely be trying to exfiltrate data. They may unwillingly or unknowingly know what they're doing and exfiltrating the data. So basically, I put in security um, controls to make sure that our employees are not stealing data. So whenever um, you guys are, like, doing stuff on your computers, we know everything you're doing. We know every website you're visiting. We know everything you're clicking and downloading. Like, we legit know everything. Now, are we looking specific at this one person saying, hey, he's doing this? It depends. <laughs> and, you know, I know at one company we had, um, I, you know, created this list, which like everybody that recently put in a two weeks notice, list of everybody. And, you know, whenever it's like a certain threshold of like, 
Huh. They yeah. emailing a lot of data to themselves. Yeah, doing doing something within like termination data. Yeah, so. it's like, huh, you you release you send a lot of emails to yourself. And I had created this threat detection to where like it looks for when you send yourself like to your personal email and like it looks for like three um consecutive letters compared to like your um our work email compared over to your work I mean your personal email and we get alert like hey this person potentially send this stuff to their um email. So I look at it and I'm like Huh, this 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 is data from that. So whenever we see that, we see all the documents that they send. And it's like, oh, okay, this is family pictures, or it's this, it's that. It's like, oh, it's nothing really, you know, crazy. But it's like, oh, this is work data. We'll litter, hey, you know, we'll contact their managers. Hey, we need you to delete all this on your computer and empty out your recycle bin. So like <laughs> so it, it was yeah. really like that. So um Yeah, was you did <laughs> the, did you build a custom detection or did y'all also have a tool? So we use DTEX too. Okay. So DTEX is like inside. It's pretty. I'm not gonna say it's. New. It's probably fairly. New. It's like probably like six, seven years. It's I don't know, but um, it's kind of fairly. But it's it's specific for like um inside a threat. But um, I know now what I'm kind of doing. I'm doing threat detection, but I'm also kind of like um starting to go like in the inside threat portion of like our like application, our customer application. So like. I'm doing like I'm having to work with like a lot of Kubernetes, ECS clusters. Um, All these words mean is big money. <laughs> yeah, like you know, really, it's really like DevOps, Sec DevOps. That's that's kind of what I'm trying to try and pivot into. And so, like, say for instance, like you know, one of our engineers probably um, going into like one of our customer databases, and they're probably doing something they're supposed to be doing. So I'm really more so I'm not building inside a threat for like corporate, but more so for our applications. Yeah. And it's way, way harder, bro. Yeah. Like it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. I was um. So we use like semantic for like our DLP solution. DLP, so yeah. it kind of has a lot of that stuff built into it. But there are things when I know it's immediately say, hey, we mm-hmm. could, you know, use this with XOR and Splunk with our, mm-hmm. and then use like more RBA type stuff to actually make this a little bit more efficient. Yeah. So I mean, that's cool though. Um, I guess we go inside threat because like inside threat on the corporate level is pretty easy. Like. Stopping you from stealing documents and stuff like that's just that's easy. one way. But then yeah. you gotta look at, you know, it can, it can get because this also a term. So and you can <clears throat> and you know I know you do this for sure because mm-hmm. it's probably your job description, but you be in engineering. But it's a term I told y'all about that's getting pretty popular: threat modeling. Yeah, we bro. I literally I'm literally doing this right now for a vault instance. So if you guys don't know what vault is, um, HashiCorp vault is basically like secrets management. So, you know, never using like API keys or are you trying to get secrets to authenticate to servers and things like that? You essentially authenticate into a vault, which holds all our secrets. You get the secret to do that. So I'm really, I'm threat modeling right now to build threat detections and um, all of that built a dashboard and all that. But I'm literally like, they just re-architect the entire vault instance. Yeah. No, but that's the thing too, is like, and I know you know this from doing consultations. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest issues I think that we're <clears throat> seeing with some people that want to get into the um, industry they don't do no research. They don't. They don't understand the jobs that they want to do. They don't. So it's like, I can help you only so much, but you got to go do yeah. the extra initiative. Like, That's kind of why I stopped doing concert set because it was the same thing. And it was like, bro, half the shit you can Google. Like, I, I love when somebody asks me a really good question. Like, when somebody asks me a really good question, I'm like. You did your homework. I, yeah, I don't mind helping. Like, I like, I asked to sit, take my time because, like, you know what to look for. It's like, oh, like how can I get inside security? I'm not answering that question. Like, if you go on some of my posts and stuff like that, like, oh, like, uh, what certification should I get for cybersecurity? I'm not answering that. That's a Google. That's a Google search. Bro, <laughs> old dude, that freaking tag, me, Aiken. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I was yeah, like, yeah. Bro, why is he asking us this? Or he was like, yeah. uh, he was acting like it was his personal help desk one time. Now, I, I don't know. Like, sometimes I don't mind it, but it's like, bro, as, at a certain point, in some of these questions, bro, you. Come they on, in my man. bio, bro. I got a whole free YouTube video <clears throat> with bro. a slash you can download. I got a free ebook. Bro. Fill the form out, you get the free ebook. Bro, I'm yeah. So when you ask me questions like that, I know they're not serious about it and I waste my time. Yeah. So but, and that's the whole reason why I was, from the gate I started charging. Yeah, not honestly, and I was trying to be, no, nah, I don't wanna you know, bend but I should have. But even now though, it's like I'm getting to the point now, because like I'm more so content driven now. I don't mind doing it on the content side of things. Cause like, man, TikTok paying. That's what I was going like, he also big on TikTok. Like, see, the thing with me, and the only difference is <clears throat> I don't really make TikTok content. 
clip up these. No, no, I do click. What I'm saying is like click TikTok like a certain way. Sometimes like the content, whether you do it in, in the app or. It, it does. It does. Because I, I, I was testing that out. It's like, you know, I was always like recording through my camera and uploading. It wouldn't do as good. Yeah. But you record in the app. Or use CapCut. Yeah, yeah. It, bro. It does amazing. But even then, like <clears throat> after you build it up, you're doing so much. It, it, the algorithm, it yeah. starts working with you. It takes a little minute. Yeah. But it and does. Um, what you can also do is I've seen some, you know, the gurus, TikTok gurus will tell you about. Going live with the post stuff and it'll help boost it. Yeah, it, it does. I know. That's why I've been going live now. Yeah. But I have figured out the the sweet spot of like finding out how to like get people to find my videos by searching. I just uh -huh. type a lot of search terms for SEO in my description. Yeah, that's right. So that's what you got to do is the SEO yeah. at that point. And I'm throwing them tags in there. But that's what I'm really good at on YouTube. Like I do a lot. Yeah, of you very did. Because you put me on TubeBuddy and all that. I don't even use TubeBuddy no more. Oh, what do you know? A video IQ? Nothing. I oh. use so with my process. I use Buzzsprout for my audio portion of the podcast. Uh huh. Buzzsprout has a tool called Co-host AI. It's fire. Uh -huh. If you seen my last couple of descriptions, uh -huh. Buzzsprout did all that. Oh, damn. And so I'll use that to make it SEO driven so people can find it on the web. And then also it'll do the chapters for me. It has blog posts it makes from it and everything. Like oh, that. damn. You, you're going to see me just after this. <laughs> I, use, uh, I use Opus Clips to do all this stuff. Oh, you said what? Opus Clips. You just take, I just take the YouTube link, throw it in there, and they give me like 10, 15 clips. And yeah, bro, choose what that I want. To me. Touch that to me. I, I got you. I got you. Like for real. Yeah. Like, it's too much trying to keep up with all this content, man. Man, it's, I don't think people realize how much work it is, bro. Like, these last two and a half months I've been creating, I mean, creating content. Like, it feels so good not to have to, but it's like, dang, I got so much content to, like, release. Yeah, you probably got a lot of brand deals, too. Bro, I, man, I got, like, I actually got to send a script off the window right now, like, autonomous. Um, Dude, like, I want they, I want one of their discs. I got one that's of their chairs. They L shape? Yeah. Um, no. So they asked me which one I wanted, but I just got like a regular desk because I'm gonna have two uh two desks set up. So I'm gonna have one for uh my gaming station and like my MacBook station. So um yeah, I can uh, I can look you up because I I like your uplift desk too. How'd it go? Um, kind of was like you know we ain't doing that right now. Uh, but what I found out too, I can about, you, I can look you up with Tunnels. What I found out about Brandon now is a lot of the. <clears throat> companies have been sleeping on a little bit of people got like a, yeah. a LinkedIn brand and a YouTube brand. Yeah. But now, slowly but surely, they've been like reaching out to yeah. me, like different things. So it's like, I'm not tripping. A lot of them have been late to get on podcasts and YouTube. But yeah. No, Coursera, man. They, Coursera been fucking with me, man. I just, I, just, I got to do my, my Google video soon. Yeah. Hold on. What, what, they, what they give you? It's not a lot. It's more than they. They played itself. I know but, you got more than me. They wasn't, they weren't willing to budge much, yeah. that much on me. Did you at least get four figures? No. Oh, yeah. I know why, though, because I did an ad for them, and <laughs> I did trial and error with the podcast. I, uh -huh. I did a mid-roll. It should have been pre-roll. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, no. So, um, But I'm your doing... following, um, what they're looking for is a little bit. But it's a YouTube video, though. Yeah, but if they work with you in the past or something, or whatever you're, from uh -huh. them links you've been sharing, they probably like your. Yeah, my, it's definitely been. I didn't really post my my link and stuff, but uh -huh. it don't matter. It don't, mm. they, even, they even owe my commission. You know, I do a lot of affiliate stuff now, so I've been Me really, too. I've been going hard with level careers. The money, bro, like, bro, I, I've 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 made like mid five figures from like affiliation with Coursera, That's and fine. so um, I, I'm doing two YouTube videos for now for like it's four figures. That's it's, fine. Yeah, it's, it, it's decent. This one is like right under four, but. Yeah. It's if one video though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's see, gonna, that's it's gonna be easy. I ain't gotta yeah, make it long. I'm gonna send it to. I'm gonna send it to my guy. Uh, I'm gonna let him edit it, even though he may be mad when he wants to quit the email list. Yeah, I'm gonna let him do it. Yeah. Uh, let me see. But yeah, no, nah, man. That's and that's kind of like when I really started seeing these brands of like even like my Microsoft deal that I got. And Microsoft they actually came back to me. They want me to do another deal with them. So um, that's dope. You should. I'm gonna plug you with Broadus. Who level up in tech? Yeah, let me know then. Yeah, he rock with me, and then he's already see your following. And what you was already talking about, boom, he he's solid. Yeah, no, let me know because I've been I've been like and even Samsung like because I've been trying to get like a lot of like because I know like like a lot of careers, career credit karma or career karma. Whatever. me on that bull. They be reaching out to me, but yeah, they reach like, out to me so much. Like I I try to refrain from working with so many because at that point it's like I want to be kind of loyal to like yeah one brand when it comes to like affiliate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to be out, and I feel like Coursera is like. You can't, you, yeah, yeah, you well, know, course careers and level been real good. Course careers me. is really good. I'm with course careers too, but I don't really talk about them as much. 
Level, well, I'm talking about level. Well, they, you know, they have my post. I stole a little bit of what Cyrus do. I just say, hey, go to these yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But level, people like Josh Matacor, so his courses always do good. They go click on my link. And well, I'm going to go to, I don't think I ever just really looked into them. But yeah, I just I, have course careers in mind. I can, I can plug you. Yeah, no, nah, that'd be dope. That'd but, be dope. Um, guys, I forgot to tell y'all, it's episode 100, right? So <laughs> I had told him, I don't know, was it like months ago or something? I said we're going to do episode 100 or something. You did, yeah. And uh, we got a shot right here. This is of uh, Martell. This is way better than Hennessy. <laughs> so look, if y'all listening right now, you got a shot you want to pull, pull a shot up. Y'all watching, pause it. Go get your <laughs> shot of your choice. It ain't got to be liquor. You can go get you some juice. Go get some water. It. This is the episode of 100, and we're going to keep on going. Mm-hmm. That's smooth. Hey, look, you gave them out. You should have told them, hit me up for a brand deal. Hey, Martel, reach out to hey, me. Hey, no, ain't no free promo. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> hey, no, for real. Look, my analytics on YouTube is ages 25 to 34. They're going to rock with that, Martel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I want to actually ask you real quick is, mm-hmm. we ain't actually the money question. Oh. <laughs> Listen, if y'all know who he is, he flashy. People be on TikTok trying to see who he talked to in his real life. Like, he a real celebrity. <laughs> I'm chilling. <laughs> He's a real celebrity. I really had some... Listen, if we could be like Brandon Marshall and say, oh, it's time to get messy. If I had more time, <laughs> we get real messy on here for the stuff I ask them. I mean, it's like Patreon back. level. I mean, we, we can come back for a second. We could. We definitely got some more uh, to come in. We, can, we could probably mess around and record in my crib whenever yeah. I get everything set up. Say less, you know. You know, I'm down. But I did want to ask, uh, seriously, though, mm-hmm. the money question. And mm-hmm. the reason why I want to ask you that is because... We hear, and you also are entrepreneur as well, mm-hmm. but we always hear from the entrepreneurs how they try to down people who work regular jobs, not knowing mm-hmm. it's people like more. you and people <laughs> on the boards and all these companies that make more than entrepreneurs. Uh-huh. And so that's what I want to talk to you about is like why it's important to niche and be very good. And like y'all saw all the things that he's able to go on interviews and say, I did all this stuff. When you can say that nine times out of ten, the job is pretty much yours. Nah, like my interviews are no longer interviews. It's like conversations of like, oh, like how do you do that? Like, I, mean, I can say this interview. Like, I like I control the interview to where like they're not asking me questions. Like, oh, like yeah, I did this. This is why I did it. Boom, boom. What are you guys' environment? I try to like take my relevant experience and be like, oh, I've done this. This is how I can do it here. Boom, boom. So that that's really like when you're in an interview, you have some more experience. Yeah. You want to take control over it. So it's like they're not drilling you down with questions. Cause like I hate being questioned. Cause like I hate it. So. Bro, yeah, like funny enough, like this role I got, I killed the interview because I had all the solutions. <clears throat> yeah. All the stuff they they are trying to do now, I had already did. Yeah. Everywhere else, especially at Optus with it, like that big company. I was like, with uh, who we were supporting with Disney, so I was just like, "Yeah, that was huge." I, I did it already. I was I was telling somebody the other day. I said, three years in, we still was finding new stuff in yeah. the environment. That that environment was so fucking big, bro. Like, and the fact that see, you was gone, but I was there for the launch of Disney Plus. Oh damn! Oh, I know that was crazy. It went too bad. That traffic. Oh, it was. It went. It went. It went through without a hitch. Like, oh. but at, when Disney Plus came, they also had added Fox and Hulu, so they started like really. Yeah, they bought Hulu, didn't they? Yeah, we yeah. Saw, we had like another sim to log into all that. So, it so was I need to buy cool. Disney Plus then instead of having Hulu because I got Hulu. I got Hulu. Um, well, my Hulu is free through Spotify. I got Disney Plus through like my homeboy. So I used yeah. his account. He like gave it to us a long time ago. Dad and HBO Max. Yeah, I got HBO Max too. But, um, yeah. I was gonna say about the questioning thing. I have a one mm-hmm. of my clients' interviews that uh I, I have all my clients record their interviews so I can listen to them, critique them. Yeah. I think the biggest thing that a lot of people need to work on is filler words. Yeah. You really do make yourself seem like you're not sure you're yourself like every time you're saying um. <laughs> if if you say um all the time, I know it's hard, but just think about what you're going to say, pause in your head, and start talking. Start method, man. It'll help you. Even this also helped me with mm-hmm. not saying um as much or like, you or know. Podcasting. I used to say you know so much. I up, say um a lot. Up until a couple of episodes ago, I saw a post. I want to say Liberty Madison probably posted it, and she was saying mm-hmm. how Saying um sometimes take away your credibility of seeing like an expert. Yeah, because then you're trying to think about what you got to say instead of just flat out saying it. Yeah. And so now I think mm-hmm. in my mind before what I'm going to say, slow it down, and then come out. And and that's and that's the thing when people are doing the interviews as well, too. Like, they be trying to, like I guess, sometimes be sound smarter than what they really are. And a lot of times those people got years and years of experience, so they know a bullshitter when they see one. Facts. And you're just talking yourself out of a job. So, 
Yes. That's why I tell people when we come to our, our interviews, like, so I have, and that's one thing we're going to do one day. If you want to have fun, mm. we can go live. And I have these sock analyst interview questions, and you can see people's answers. Oh, no, we should do that. You can see people's answers on the Google it's Sheets. On TikTok. And I told, I told one dude straight, I said, bro, I can... I know you didn't know the answer, but I could see all you did was slap something from Google and throw it on here versus yeah, trying to make sense experience. of what I asked you and put it in your own words. That's yeah. not going to fly. I was like, don't get me wrong. I Google all the time, but I put it in my own words. I know how to explain it. I'll tell a soft skill that a lot of people don't recognize is like knowing your audience. So if you know your audience, you have no problem if you want to move through corporate. Yeah. Because them people that your manager report to, they don't understand all that stuff about data pipelines. So that's Once one thing about my manager, like my director. He actually is very technical, and I love it. That's how, so Yahoo Manager, super technical. That's why I wanted to work uh-huh. with Paranoids. I literally had the offer, but they had to put it on hold in Q4. Okay. And I was like, I don't feel like waiting around. I, but <laughs> J.P. Morgan had me bent, so yeah. I, I definitely didn't want to do that no more. And then um, Target, when I was doing, I was interviewing for the lead CSER analyst at Target, uh-huh. and oh. they had to put that on hold, too. That was during the pandemic? or no? This was last year. This was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And, that was a man. I'll tell you, that was like a cool, like that was like one of the more challenging interviews I had with a director. But he mm-hmm. was like, he asked me about looking for lateral movement and then data exfiltration on the Linux box, and then wow. we was talking about like SSH. And he was saying like they went into the files of the to get the MFA codes. Mm-hmm. It was it was fire. And listen, it's a strategy. I think I said on another interview. I mean episode. But all I do is string my interviews along. And questions I really like that I think somebody might ask me in another interview, I take a mental note of them yeah. and get better on that answer and then tell the next person. Yeah, no, that's that's because I'm I'm trying to actually move more in like a DevSecOps role now, like data engineering, like, you know, the data pipeline, CI, C D pipeline one. I'm trying to go into like stuff like that now. Cause like I say when I'm in a cybersecurity role, yeah. but like I know like big data is like yeah, huge. Like, I need to honestly I wanna look more into a lot of companies, it's going to eventually happen, but there are really no real guidelines over AI right now. Oh, yeah. We actually working on that right now. So once that happens with the generative AI, that's going to be big. <clears throat> so you can, that's another niche. Just like, I don't know if that's you That's kind of going to big data, though, when you right. think about it. I don't know if you watched my episode that I did with Erin uh, Relford. She works for Google. She's a privacy data engineer. No, I Those are some of the things like we talk about. And Actually, link that in here. You got to link that in this episode I so I can go back. <laughs> I'll, I'll link it in here. But we need to ask, okay, uh, real quick, a day in the life of a security engineer at a blockchain company. Mm-hmm. And I told people a lot of times, too, this dude is doing so good at work. They interviewed me out the strength that we work together. <laughs> Swear to God. Oh, uh, yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. 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 How did they go anyway? Did y'all ever interview? We interviewed. I think... Okay. I think well, one of the things I was struggling with last year a lot toward the end was I had a year of really not being super technical, so I had uh-huh. lost like a lot of some of my skill set because I also had been doing all this other stuff, so it's mm-hmm. hard to like really study for different things. Yeah, but I also knew they probably was looking for somebody a little bit more engineer focus. For sure, because like, that's that's what happened with me. I interviewed man, bro. I was interviewing with this company called Woven Planet. Mm-hmm. And they work on like autonomous vehicles and working on the software and that they're a subsidiary mm-hmm. of Toyota. Mm-hmm. They have a freaking smart city in was it China or Japan called mm-hmm. Susano. Oh, so it's like Sasuke Susano. <laughs> nah, for real, bro. It's like it's fire. I wanted to do it because like this. I is remember a niche. we talked about that. I remember you was talking about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a niche, that. but like I was ex- like that's the thing too, guys. Like find technology that gets you excited, and you'll probably find another passion. No, for sure. That's that's the whole thing. It was like, I did a project on this in grad school. The Internet of Things, Smart City, Smart Clothes. Mm-hmm. So I already knew this was, what, 2018? So what's, what, five years ago? So going yeah. on six years, I said within, I think we, in our project, we said within five, 10, 15 years, this is going to be the norm. Mm-hmm. Smart cameras, smart, yeah. all this different stuff. We that's already got norm. it now with these doorbells. I remember, was that Nest? Was that, that wasn't the Nest cameras. Was that Ring, Ring. cameras? What other cameras was? They got hacked like a, a year ago. They got hacked. Everybody's looking through people' uh, cameras and stuff and talking on them. Might have been ring. I don't know. Could have been. No, real know. quick, we want we want you to we want you to bless the audience. A general number of like your total comp, like, because listen, so, I didn't even I hadn't even told you I didn't even <laughs> list off where he worked at. But he said it already. He worked at Robinhood. He worked at Opto, Cisco, Booze. He worked for like a startup at one point. Yeah. Um. So 
a lot of a lot of my comp is in equity right now. And we just won our lawsuit. And so in the secondary market, our stock doubled. And that's a secondary market. So you got two different. So you got stocks and a, a, a crypto. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comp? Okay. So they, they actually gave us a crypto token too. But um, so actual equity from the secondary market, it doubled. So the actual, I really don't really truly know the actual value of it. But I know they did have a buyback. Well, not even buyback. They um bought, well, yeah, a buyback. And I think they did the buyback at like, I think like $68 a share or something like that. And so um, if I'm basing upon that number, then I probably have about, I think like 550000 in stock. But then, you know, we don't, I don't really know. So all in all, like if I'm counting my equity too, which I really can't count my equity. Like, let's see. Listen, you got to bring the calculator <laughs> up. That's how much bread it is. Let's see. Uh, it's close to 500. And we count the equity. That's that's a part of it. And this is just from one job. He's, I didn't even touch on all the other stuff he's touched on on other pods. I was like, this is unique. They don't know him like I know him. <laughs> so, but... Quickly, what is like a typical day to day for you? Because I know like your work is really more so based on tasks. It's like okay, yeah, project. Once based. I knock this out, yeah, I can go do whatever I want to do. Um, like work wise, mm-hmm. <clears throat> a lot of it because I really my my um man, well my director because we don't have a manager, we have a lead. But like my direct report is like my director, so like like he give me like freedom, like do what you want to do, but. That's just have it done. Yeah, it, it's 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 good and it's bad. It's good because like I really can got like guide the success from my career, but it's bad because like if I'm not taking responsibility and discipline enough, it's really easy for me to get caught not doing anything. But um, right now, so I was breaking on this data pipeline. I was telling, so um, we we have like a third party that we use for like our sim. And we're trying to, like, take everything in-house right now. And so I was working on, like, a data pipeline that makes it, like, extremely easy for us, like, to onboard data and all that. Because, you know, we're using, like, BigQuery and all that. Like, because what a lot of people don't realize, like, a lot of sims and stuff like that, it's really going to be based on, like, big data. Like, so BigQuery, Spark, uh, Apache Spark, all that. Like, you're really going to be using SQL and a lot of stuff like that to kind of create your queries and do your research and threat detection, threat hunting. That's really what everything, because it's like so, like, you know, you got Kubernetes, you got all these DevOps, you got this infrastructure and all this data. And it's like, you know, the traditional thing, like, you think about putting all that data in Splunk. It's way too so it expensive. A lot of money. Yeah, way too much money. And, you know, a lot of companies are realizing this now because they adopt all this new technology. So they have to go to like BigQuery and Big Data, um, stuff like that. And so I had to pretty much kind of create a data pipeline that handles terabytes and terabytes of data, you know, making sure we were getting that, you know, no errors in that. And so basically what I kind of did, um, I built like an ECS cluster or whatever using Vector. I'm, I'm getting super technical right now. That's cool. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I just ended up like kind of building that out or whatever. And it was a lot of infrastructure. I had to build up a lot of stuff that I didn't take into account for. So I just finished it up now. And so um, right now I'm going into like a space of like um, hardening like our um, HashiCorp vault instances and all of that. So I'm like I'm doing that as well too. And, I, and I'm also um, looking at um, implementing like runtime monitoring for like our non Kubernetes um, stuff and probably doing like some external attack surface um, monitoring and stuff like that. So it's a lot, bro. <laughs> it's, and that's just like the high level stuff. That's not even like you know, stuff that just comes up and like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. But I'm not going to lie. This is like, I haven't had this much fun and learning experience since Booz Allen. So that's why I've definitely been learning a lot. Like I've been forced to really, I'm I'm really moving as a data engineer, which is like really good because I want to go into like that day of off space. So like Terraform, um, I'm get, uh, Oh, like, oh, that policy is cold, Centennial, or Centennial, whatever, Centennial, I think Centennial, um, policy is cold, um, infrastructure is cold, like, I'm, 
I'm doing a lot with like cloud engineering, cloud stuff, cloud infrastructure. So, yeah. Man, that's fire. Listen, we want this to be longer, but we had some snafus <laughs> in the beginning. We definitely gonna do a part two, and they'll probably be at a special location. But if y'all did appreciate this conversation, y'all know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit all the notifications. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave us a review. And if you want to donate, the link's in the description. And if you want to follow Tay, his social media handles will be in the description as well. But like your boy I always say, it's your boy HD. Until next time, let's stay textual, and we out. All right. <laughs>